Estimating Star Wars Characters Midichlorian Counts Part 2. I said I wanted to make it a series, so here is the second one. The first time we did non-force users, so this time it's going to be Jedi and Jedi only. So, let's get on with it. Okay, how did you like the intro? It was given to me by the same person that did my banner, Jackson the Great. So, I mean, go and subscribe to them if you want. Um, they did this for free. Uh, I didn't even ask for it. They just volunteered to do it. So, thank you so much to them. That is very kind of them. But, like I said, we're going to be estimating Jedi's midichlorian count. We actually have quite a few of them. And one of them is Ahsoka. And I do not want to hear you tell me that she's not a Jedi. Because she at least was. And she's one of the main, like force wielding characters in star wars so she counts and i also want to say as a disclaimer there are a lot of speculation and rumors out there of different characters midichlorian counts for example a popular one is obi-wan being thirteen thousand. however none of these are actually canon so i will literally just be estimating based on what i've seen of them in films series comics etc etc so I'm going to play this clip of Qui-Gon talking just to give a little bit of context before we start and I'm going to show you a little paragraph on Wikipedia, so listen to this. The reading is off the chart. Over 20,000. Even Master Yoda doesn't have a midichlorian cut that high. No Jedi. Well, I guess that was more Obi-Wan talking, but you got the message. Anakin Skywalker's midichlorian count is confirmed to be over 20,000, more than Yoda's. So what we know there, and one of the very few things we know in canon, is that Anakin's is above 20,000, probably by at least a little bit, and Yoda's is below it. So, character one, or Jedi number one, is Anakin Skywalker. Now, we know as the Chosen One, his midichlorian count is going to be very, very high, and we know of that clip it is over 20,000. Anakin's full potential is described very often as literally like godlike, like heads and shoulders above any other character in the universe. And if you consider someone like Palpatine, who probably reached his full potential in the Force, has probably a couple thousand less than Anakin at the very least. So Anakin's is going to be crazy, and for that reason, and after discussion with a few people in my Discord that you can find in the uh, description, I'm going to call it 25,000, so quite well above 20,000. Jedi number two, Grand Master Yoda. Now, in that clip, we can assume um, from it that Yoda's is relatively close to 20,000, probably 17,000 plus at a minimum. We also learn from the films, uh, based off what we see, that he is one of the most powerful characters in Star Wars. He fights Palpatine for a very long time, would have beat him in lightsaber combat, but obviously... Lightsabers didn't actually get used for very long in that fight. Um, he also beat Dooku, and yeah, I would have to say that it is nineteen thousand, still a lot below Anakin, enough to make up the difference in like power that potential has. Like Anakin can literally be a god. Yoda was just like a, a really really good Jedi, and not like too much more than that. Um, but yeah. Obi-Wan Kenobi is the third Jedi on this list, and we've spoken about his rumour being 13,000 earlier. I do think that it would be relatively close to that. Obi-Wan is one of the few Jedi that can like live to 9,000 years old, or whatever, I know that's an exaggeration, that I would probably say did reach their full potential. So, he probably has a midichlorian count lower than it comes across by how well he does against people like Maul, Grievous... Etc. Uh, Etc. Et and notice how Obi Wan's feats are lightsaber combat based rather than force based. For example, Luke Skywalker is said to be the most powerful character in Star Wars in terms of like force, and we see him do force projection. But Obi Wan, we see his feats as lightsaber combat because um, they can be like trained and learnt easier rather than force powers, which you do need a high midichlorian count to like achieve a lot of them. So it is for this reason that I will agree with the rumour and say 13,000. Now, Jedi number four, Luke Skywalker, is a difficult one because we have not actually seen his prime, what I would describe. We've seen him in Return of the Jedi uh, where he was good, but still very new to like 
being a Jedi. And we've seen him in The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens, where he recently shut himself off from the Force. So it's likely that when he opened himself back up to it at the end, he was not as powerful as him in his prime. So I am going to give you two answers. One of them being if we were to see a lot of Luke being literally like a god, like Anakin was meant to be. And another answer if Luke's power level is like the same as what we see in The Last Jedi, um, which is still crazy, but it's not like godlike like Anakin was meant to be. So if we do see a lot of Luke become this godlike character, then I will estimate his midichlorian count to be the same as Anakin's at 25,000, and I will agree with what George Lucas says, and I hope this does happen, because obviously it came from George, George has like a special place in my heart as he did write Star Wars, so I want what him saying in the past to like come true in the future, um, but if we do not see this, and he's probably just a little bit better than he was at the end of The Last Jedi, then I will say 21,000, still higher than Yoda, um, we do know uh, that Luke did become the most powerful Jedi ever, but not to the level that Anakin was meant to be from what we've seen so far. Jedi number five, Mace Windu, one of the most powerful Jedi ever. He actually defeated Darth Sidious, one of the only, well, in fact, the only Jedi to defeat Palpatine, unless you count Vader turning back to Anakin and then chucking him off, um, technically... But no, I'm not going to count that. Yoda would have done it um, if it was just a lightsaber battle, but it wasn't. So yeah, Mace Windu, incredibly powerful. And I know we're talking about Windu, but it's made me think that maybe I put Yoda's a little bit too high as he has a massive advantage over every other character in Star Wars. And it's the fact that he's hundreds of years old. Like, it's very plausible that his midichlorian count is lower than someone like Mace's, but he achieved, like, every ounce of of perfection in his powers like he could not get any more powerful and obviously mace being a human lived a normal human length of a life probably didn't like achieve his full potential but yeah i'm going to stick by it yoda being 19,000 and i'm going to say mace windu is 17,000 because what we've seen of him definitely doesn't top someone like yoda anakin or luke um so yeah uh jedi number six plo koon now, Plo in Legends is very, very powerful, and that doesn't mean in canon he would be such, like, a big step down from that, because, like, we don't actually see anything of him in canon, really, so it's very plausible that he is so powerful, there's just no way to prove it, so this is the biggest, like, speculation and pure estimation um, of any character in this list, but I do think he would be really powerful, not as powerful as him in Legends, to be honest, but I definitely think he would have a count above Obi-Wan, say, but not quite at a Windu level, um, I just really can't put myself, like, to say he has the same midichlorian count as Windu that we literally see, uh, defeat Palpatine, the only way of explaining it would be the same for, like, all the Jedi that are, spe are separated when Order 66 happens, like, Palpatine knows how powerful they are, and it's potentially risky to him to have them on Coruscant and potentially come for him. So that's like the only explanation to if he was so powerful. Palpatine just got rid of him on purpose so he couldn't fight him. But I'm going to say 15,000. So 2,000 less than Windu, but still pretty high. 2,000 above Obi-Wan. Jedi number seven is Kit Fisto. Now, if we go off what we just said about Plo, he gets some minus points because Palpatine did not actively try and get him off of Coruscant uh, because he was afraid to face him or something. But um, I guess he doesn't do that with Windu either. Um, however, that could just be like the arrogance of the Sith. Like, we know how they are. We know that they are arrogant. That is why someone like Maul loses all the time. Um, but back onto Fisto. I don't know where we went off track there. Um, he's... Definitely a very, very powerful Jedi. He's one of the top tier at the prequel time. Hence how we see how, like, he handles General Grievous. Like, he didn't kill him, but, like, he was not in trouble at any point in that fight he had with Grievous. So that's pretty impressive when you consider Grievous' reputation was literally slaughtering Jedi. So we know he's pretty good. I would say above Obi-Wan and below Plo, like, very in the middle of those two. And to be precise, I would guess 14,000. Now, Ezra Bridger, uh, Jedi number 8 on this list, 
does not have the most feats. Like, he gets destroyed by Vader. He does okay against a lot of Inquisitors, but Inquisitors aren't exactly, like, the most powerful beings. Um, so it's harder to tell with Ezra. I think it is clear that he has a lot of raw power, and I think by the time of Ahsoka, we're really going to see that, assuming Ahsoka does find him. So... Um, I know this may potentially be controversial, but I would say that Ezra Bridger has a count of the same of Kit Fisto, 14,000. I think that that could potentially be underestimating it, to be honest. Um, Maul could potentially tell that Ezra was quite powerful as he wanted him to be his apprentice. I think we definitely get hints throughout Rebels that he is slowly, like, overtaking Kanan. Maybe doesn't get there in the end, but is slowly heading towards that. Like, we see so many incredible feats for someone of his age. He's a teenager. Like, the connections he makes to all the animals, how he controlled the driver of the ATST to make it, like, shoot uh, their own stormtroopers and then, like, walk off the edge. Like, Ezra is powerful. Um, so, yeah, I think 14,000 could potentially be underestimating it. So, I'm actually going to I'm gonna say 15,000. I've changed my mind. It's 15,000, in my opinion. Now, number nine, Dracasta Nu. I assume that the Jedi have some kind of, like, minimum midichlorian number that they need of, like, all the blood samples they get um, to, like, recruit a Jedi. And I think Jocasta Nu is, like, the minimum of this. She is a librarian for a reason. However, we do see her in the comics do a little bit more um, when Vader and the Grand Inquisitor come to the Jedi Temple. I don't want to say too much about it, but she doesn't seem completely terrible. However, she is definitely of the lower scale of a Jedi, and I'm going to say that she has a midichlorian count of 9,000, which is probably quite low. I said Finn has 8,000, so yeah. Next up, Ahsoka Tano. She probably is quite hard to estimate as we can assume her prime is between Rebels and the Mandalorian as the Mandalorian is like after Return of the Jedi. So we don't actually see it, but we can assume that we take Rebels Ahsoka and make her a bit better. So very, very powerful. Definitely taking a step up from Jocasta Nu. Um, I would have to say that hers is around the level of Plo and Windu. Um, that may sound controversial because it's very high, but, like, come on. She beat Maul at 17 years old. She did very well against Grievous at 16, like, I pointed out how well Ezra does at her at his age, sorry. Um, Ahsoka does better, slightly older, like, Maul and Grievous are definitely better than Inquisitors, so I would say that her in mid count is probably higher than Ezra's, um, although she definitely had it easier than Ezra, as, like, she was trained from earlier on, and she definitely had, like, better teachers, like, Anakin and all the Jedi that would have trained her over the years are better, but I'm still going to say hers is over uh, Ezra Bridges, and I do really hope we see her full potential, as she is no longer in the Jedi Order, so maybe she's not limited by as many, like, morals, or, like, rules, should I say? Rules is the right word. Um, like, she would kill someone if she had to, um, so yeah, hopefully we do see a bit of that, and I'm going to say 16,000, so 1,000 less than Windu. I want to say really quickly that the average count of a Jedi is probably between 11 and 13,000, um, and I've talked about a lot of characters above this, so I just want to quickly say that I do know that I'm picking out some of the like highest characters, like midichlorian counts, like I'm not deluded. And I also want to say that Ahsoka being so high may be hard for you to understand, but... A lot of these characters that I'm covering, um, like, reach different parts of their potential. Like, the midichlorian count does not indicate how powerful they are. It shows how powerful they could be. And Ahsoka being 1,000 less than Windu may be, like, confusing to you because Windu literally beat Palpatine and you can't imagine Ahsoka beating Palpatine because she lost to Vader who would lose to Palpatine. But Ahsoka may not reach her full potential and that's why, like, you couldn't see her doing that because you've not seen her like, perform anywhere near her full potential yet. Maybe we do in the future, but, like, no, we haven't yet. Ahsoka probably is at, like, much more of a disadvantage to reaching her potential than some other Jedi, much like uh, Ezra is at a disadvantage as well, because she's not been trained, like, throughout her whole life. Now that Order 66 has happened, she's surrounded by a lot less Force users, so it'd be harder. However, she did get, like, raised by Jedi until she was, like, 17, so she didn't have it that hard, but it's going to be much harder for her to reach her full potential. So if it's confusing that I've said she's this like high in her midichlorian count, it's because we haven't seen her perform the power 
that I believe she has the potential to reach, is what I'm saying. And finally, I'm going to be doing Evan Peel. Now, this is a bit of a weird one. He's random. I've just chucked him in here. Um, he's not very powerful. He probably doesn't reach his full potential of the low midichlorian count he has. And yeah, there's not really too much to say about Evan. So I'm going to straight up tell you that I think his midichlorian count is only 11,000. So um, the second lowest on this list. I believe it's definitely higher than Jocasta Nu. Like I said, she is a librarian for a reason. Evan Peel is out fighting in the Clone Wars because he is more powerful than her. But yeah, uh, I think 11,000. But with that being said, that is going to be it for estimating Star Wars characters' midichlorian counts. Episode 2, The Jedi Only. Um, if you enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe while you're down there. Comment what you think these Jedi's midichlorian counts are. And if you are like wanting to have a genuinely long debate about it, then my Discord is in my description. I have a uh, d debate channel in that Discord. So yeah, it's ready for you to come and debate. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching and in a bit.